getting started? All right. Welcome and thank you for joining us at this virtual day in the life episode for June 2021. I'm Marie Stacks. I'm here today with the Arkansas Center for Data Sciences, more often known as ACDS. ACDS is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to building and retaining top data science and IT talent in the state of Arkansas. One of our main objectives is to facilitate apprenticeship programs in the state with companies large and small um, across all industries. Since one of our apprenticeship programs is centered around data engineering, we thought it would be fun to host this event and have Jeremy Higgs with us here today. So we're gonna showcase what it really looks like in the average day of a data engineer. Today's event features Jeremy Hicks, data engineer at CAE USA, uh, based in North Little Rock. And um, we're excited to have Jeremy share his experience in and expertise of data engineering. If you have any questions during the discussion, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll plan to open up your mics at the end for Q&A. And, &A. and um, now let's get started. So what you're really here for, Thank you, Jeremy, for being here with us today. We'll start by having you introduce yourself um, and sharing a little bit about your background and your company. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jeremy Higgs. I'm with uh, the company CAE USA. We are a military training, uh, air crew training uh, contractor. We provide uh, basically all types of air crew training across uh, every branch of the military that I'm aware of. And uh, a lot of what we do in the company is actually assessing if our training is going uh, is going well, if it's productive, and we use data to uh, basically back up our decisions and, and try to be a, a data driven training partner for the U.S. military. I have uh, in 2020 I, I earned my master's degree in information science from UALR, and. Uh, also, I have graduate certificates in data science and business analytics. I've been with the company for about two years now, and um, really most of what I do is to ensuring that the, the data is accurate and useful as it comes in. Love it. And I know we've had the chance to work together with you and the CAE team um, on some of your IT apprenticeships. So I've gotten to pick your brain a little bit before. <laughs> so I'm excited to chat today. Um, the big question, and we always start with this, is what is a typical day in the life of a data engineer? What does that mean? My typical day starts out with uh, basically reviewing uh, any visualizations that I have connected to automated data. If anything is in an automated pipeline I, and it comes in on, on a daily basis, I will look at those visualizations that we have created to make sure that the data is, is still coming in accurately and efficiently. Um, and then after that, I, I, I will move on to requests. If there is nothing wrong, first things first, I have to make sure that our data that is getting reported to the different departments and the different programs is accurate. So I will stop everything to make sure that, that any repairs that need to be done are, are done immediately. Uh, but after that, I move on to data requests. And it's, it, it's as varied as data is. The, the people will come up with, hey, can you look at this? Can you uh, find this solution? Is there a way to do this better? So I spend a lot of time um, really researching data sets and the collection methods that, that are currently being used to try to find maybe some efficiencies. Maybe we can stop collecting in a certain tool because it's easier to collect in a different tool and pipeline that data into our visualization tools and our platforms, whichever one we happen to need to use at the, at the time. <clears throat> and then after that, there, there's a really a lot of technical support for anybody using our visualization tools. If they have any questions, they want to know why the data is what it is. I sit back and I answer those questions and, and basically try to build trust in the data that they're seeing. That's fantastic. So you're really taking the data and helping them turn it into that story for the business. Is that yes. kind of the? Yeah, that's to... exactly what it is. I mean, if you take a raw data set and show it to somebody, they're going to look at it and go, what is that? But if yes. you can turn it into a visualization, into a story about what they're interested in, they will read through it and go, 
now I understand. And it, it really does help drive those decisions. Exactly. I love it. So uh, we did have a fun fact dropped into the chat. So I'm going to get share it so that everybody knows that's there. Jeremy is tracking over eight active air crew, air crew training programs with thousands of students passing through them for the U.S. Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. So just to kind of give you a, a little bit of insight, Eric wanted to share that. So um, what are some of the attributes or skills that make someone successful in your role? Well, hard skills, uh, basically understanding statistics, uh, Python coding is, is pretty critical. Um, but really all the hard skills associated with data analytics and, and data manipulation, those are very important uh, because you really, you can't just grab hold of a data set and start creating everything efficiently and effectively. But really what I would think uh, is more important because hard skills can be developed is actually some of the soft skills like organization and logical. You need to be a very logical person because it is a step-by-step -step iterative process to take a data set from one uh, form and transform it to another. And the other is probably flexibility because every data set is going to create new issues, new problems, and you, you have to be able to adapt to what's coming in and how, and basically how fast it's coming in. So that, those are the most important to me. That's super helpful. I know a lot of the folks on the call today are probably trying to figure out, is this role the right one for me? So how have you seen your role change over the last few years? Has there been any kind of strong pivots or changes maybe due to COVID or just due to the technology shift in general? Well, that is one thing about uh, data work is it, it's basically gonna turn over about every five years. Uh, I mean, honestly, there, there will be a full change in, in data skills almost every five years because technology is progressing so rapidly. Uh, me in particular, I started out as basically just a, a technical contributor in my company to some of the analytical efforts. Um, and I've transitioned to uh, now, now I'm a technical subject matter expert. So anybody that is curious about what data may possibly be able to do, they come to me, ask me questions. And I'm also starting to advise on uh, data, data department expansion within our entire company. That's fantastic. What are, so obviously what you do day to day and what your team does is very integral to the success of the company. What are some of the key value adds that you see data engineers providing kind of impacting the larger business? Well, at, at its key, data is a support function. Unless the company is actually selling a data product, everything about it is support. It, it is a way of, of helping the company make decisions and quite honestly, once the, once the key decision makers within the company start accepting that the data is correct and start trusting the data, you can see a difference in the company almost on a daily basis that they are going to this data-driven, data-accepted uh, philosophy. And, and really, it, it's, it's a crucial uh, indicator for, for most companies out there now. That's fantastic. So I'm, I'm hearing that people don't get into this space if they want to ever be bored, because it sounds like it's constantly changing. So you're never going to be bored. You're always going to have a challenge in front of you. Um, it honestly sounds fun. So what is it difficult to attract strong data engineer talent to a business? Is there any kind of skill shortage that you're seeing in the market? It, it, it can be very difficult to, to get the talent that you're looking for. Um, it, it's, it, data is the, the ruling indicator for all of your, you, the work you're going to be doing. So it kind of tells you what you need to do, how you need to do it. And um, let's see, I, I had a note on, on that about the shortages. Um, but it really depends on the company and the company culture that is going to make it, whether it's difficult or what they're looking for and what they need. But as far as a shortage, uh, I, I did a quick Google search, uh, actually an Indeed search for data engineers, and there is about 10,000 job openings right now. Now, it's a, a related field is data architecture. 
and it's very close. There's a lot of overlap and there's over 40,000 job openings. So there are, there's, there's a shortage of people that, that can do the job, but, and that, that is going to create a difficulty in attracting those talents because they can kind of pick and choose who they want to work for. And that, that's a part of the reason I think ACDS has seen so many folks reach out to say, hey, we need talent and we need to train them the way that we need them, but we're having, we need your help finding the right folks. So um, yeah, I think we're, we're seeing that, but it's nice to hear that it is, is something that you all see as well. So um, what advice would you give someone? I love this question. So what advice would you give someone who is looking to pursue this as their career field, as their role? Start learning. I mean, it's like I said, it turns over about every five years, uh, skill sets, they depreciate, uh, you, you will lose the skills. So, but if you start learning today and you want to continue in this field, you have to continue to learn at all times. Every day is a new challenge. So you will learn something new, but, but really it, it is about educating yourself and developing the skills, soft skills, hard skills that are going to make you successful. Absolutely. I love it. I think education, it sounds like since data changes every so much, ever so much, um, and it's just something that, you know, we naturally like to educate ourselves continuously. So sounds like a great fit. Um, okay. I am kind of out of my, my questions that I tend to go through. I'd love to open up the floor. I'm going to turn on, um, everyone now has the ability to unmute themselves. So please feel free to add some questions to the chat or unmute yourself and, and hop in on the conversation. Ask Jeremy questions. I'm leaving an awkward pause and I know it makes people look kind of antsy. Don, it looks like you came off mute. Yeah, it is. Um, Jeremy, I, I was hoping you could describe, uh, and I apologize if my audio isn't the best, but I was hoping you could describe um, kind of how you document the data once you get it on the shelf, because that's really what you're, what you're doing is, is putting data on the shelf for people to consume. If you could talk a little bit about how you guys document that data, like a data dictionary, um, either how you do it or in, in a perfect world, uh, um, how you would like to see, or, you know what I mean? Best practices, um, for describing the data so that people know for sure what all of those little data elements uh, represent a data dictionary is a crucial crucial point of, of any data department any data efforts that are going on out there in any of any of your companies um uh like don explained it, it really tells what the data is and it's it's imperative that you have that kind of knowledge going in because you can create some really bad decisions if you think you know what's in the data and you don't actually have that, that knowledge. So in, in my department, we have created a data dictionary where, and it's a single repository for all the data sets. We can go in, look at it, and it's really just an Excel file. Just, it's another data set for us to, to pour through. Um, but as far as uh, the platform that we use, for our transformations, it is actually self-documenting. You can go through our platform and see every transformation that I have created for a data set, walk through it and see how the data set is created. So the platform itself creates a documentation for the ETL, and then it describes the, uh, the data on, on the uh, output end. So it, it really is really useful to use tools like that to that assist you with that kind of operation. That's a great question. Any other questions? We did get a comment uh, or a chat comment that said, um, "This is." I love that you pointed out the importance of telling a story with data. This is a key component to any research to help everything make sense. So. Um, and then another comment from a manager perspective, data engineering and related data science fields are growing rapidly and companies are pivoting to actively recruit, train, uh, and train interested candidates, even assessing candidates that are just getting started in the field. So just a little added content for us there. 
Marie, I've got a quick question for Jeremy. So first of all, I want to say thanks, Jeremy, for your time today. This is a great story. Uh, I was thinking that you might be able to give us, you know, what are what are one or two of the top decisions that, that you're supporting on a daily, weekly basis? I, I was thinking that in the training, there might be service level agreements that you have with the various military divisions and you're tracking the results against those service level agreements. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to imagine what kind of decisions you're supporting. It, it honestly depends on the program and, and what data we are able to get from them. Uh, being a military training contractor, there, there will be data that either I will not be privileged to because of, of classification ratings, uh, things like that. But our, our general unclassified data, we are doing a lot of student comments and student critiques, and we're trying to see uh, how the students themselves assess uh, each of the programs. So that's our most common that we are doing in, in my particular group. But uh, really, we're, we're looking at their courseware and, and how functional is their, is their courseware? Is it actually helping the students to retain knowledge? and to be a better air crew whenever they uh, exit the, the training program. And we're bouncing that against, now we have some uh, critiques going out to the actual uh, programs, the not training programs, but the actual flight line uh, programs. And they are coming back and saying that, you know, are you, your students are performing well in this area. There is a, uh, there is a lag in this area. So we're getting that, that real time feedback from the commanders, their commanders saying, I wish you would teach this. I wish you would, um, you, you're doing a really good job training them in, in air crew management. And, and that, that's a lot of what we're doing, but we're also trying to, to jump into um, simulation, simulator usage to basically try to predict downtime for simulators, things like that. And since they're very expensive pieces of equipment that have some very expensive parts, how can we optimize each program simulator usage to uh, save them money on, on as far as part replacement? And we're starting to get into that quite a bit. So it's a more continuous improvement loop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it's it's a it's a cycle. We we get everything our most of our data in daily. Okay. Do you train on uh, F-14s or Tomcats? Uh, we have, uh, it's F-15E. I okay. believe the 14s are part of one of the uh, fighter cat, uh, category groups. Uh, I just wonder if you trained my son. Well, I can look through surveys if you give me a name. <laughs> that's, that's uh, if he's gone through any of our programs, I'm sure I will have a survey with his name on it somewhere. It sounds like oh, it very no. well could be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really, it's his pre-qual before he gets into the fighters. Uh, there, there are uh, trainer aircraft that, that he could go through that it, actually CAE has its own uh, training system or training center where we do basically an initial qualification for a pilot and we see all of their, their surveys. Well, they learn on, it's basically like a, I think it's a Beechcraft King Air uh, type uh, one one prop, two prop, and then they uh, upgrade until they get into the fighter category. Yeah. So your your son's been well trained if he's already sitting in a in the cockpit of an F fourteen. And to add to it, we did have some more commentary. So, um, Bill, other than areas being other areas being assessed include financial plan versus actual repair of repairable items and obsolescence management to provide customers easy to understand insights into the health of their programs for future planning purposes. So um, a little more, a little more color too, to add to the Very good. Yeah. And I was reminded that we are also tracking uh, internal uh, departmental KPIs. Uh, we track ourselves as well as the other programs. Okay. So Jeremy, I just want to address Jenny's uh, question probably more aimed for you. Any advice for a student to try and decide if it's a right career choice for them? Because you just came from that world recently. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's try it out. Uh, basically, there, there's, there, there's no real advice. 
because data is so different across the board, depending on where you're at. You, you may get into a company and go, okay, I really like this data, but I don't like what I'm doing with it. And then there's opportunities outside of what you might be particularly doing. Um, but a, a real, it, it really depends on the person. It, it's going to be an individual choice as to are you prepared for the stress and the the velocity that you'll you'll have to adapt to anything changing as it comes in. And and really, if you're if you're up for a challenge, go for it. This is where challenge is right now. That's great advice. I'm looking real quick. Um, I have one more question for you. So as we think about companies starting to automate their processes inside their organizations, how do you see the role of a data engineering or data engineer rather, excuse me, um, change because of that and potentially, you know, what impact could it have on, on your future career as a data engineer? Well, what, one of the things that data engineers do is it seems like they're working themselves out of a job because they are, they are, they are really trying to take the human element out of all of this data work. But the issue, you, you can say, well, they're working themselves out of a job, but that's only if the data sources or anything in the data never changes. So as I make a development, I may work on three or four developments in a week, create the ETLs that need to be uh, need to make it functional. But I also have to go back and repair that and, and fix, make adjustments. So you kind of go from a developer at the at the front of the job to a maintenance uh, personnel at the in the middle of the job. So it, it's just really that's part of that flexibility that you have to be prepared that yes, one, you are kind of working yourself out of a job, but you're also creating a new position for yourself as you go. It's if almost, I may, oh yeah, I'm go ahead, Eric. Yeah. Primary, I'm gonna step in just, just as a uh, manager of the company. One thing I'd like to caveat for the team, everything totally track what Jeremy said. Um, one important uh, element there is that the work that you do as a data engineer or in that field related to that is you are creating more work for yourself that you may not see that bio wave is coming. And, and Jeremy talked about this separately. Um, you'll never be for a lack of work. And there's once the, and we found this, we found uh, myself being a prior aviator. We have folks that have a very old hat mentality of how things are and how they ought to be. Once you put some data in front of them and craft the story in a way that they understand, they go from starving and, and not realizing they're starving to they realize they're starving and they want more and more and more to the point where uh, for Jeremy, he gets so many things thrown at him now that he has to create novel solutions for. And he's where the rubber meets the road because the programs are actually acting on the decisions made. And our customers are making uh, 20, 30 year decisions based on decisions being made that will impact the program for years to come. So a lot of great, uh, great insight to what Jeremy was saying, but I'll tell you is that everything, time he does something and does it well, it creates three times more work for him on the next year which then he gets to go back and pick and choose as he kind of elevates the company uh, to say, okay, but where do I bring that to a new technical uh, technician versus engineer? Which one am I going to tackle? And then build a team around that. I see that we have some of our other folks on here as well, like Andre, that are going to be very much leading those kind of efforts in the very near future. So pretty exciting stuff. Over. Eric, I think you just, you hit something just nail on the head because to me, Jeremy, what you're doing and what, what really data can do for a company is that continuous improvement. So you make a solution, you get it automated and you automate that portion. So it optimizes what's going on right there, but then there is no shortage of opportunity to continue to improve. So I love that you guys have kind of tag teamed that question because I do think there's what you do today is changing what you have to do tomorrow. Uh, and I, I love it. So um, let's see. Any other, any other comments or questions? These have been great questions. All right, I'm leaving the awkward pause. Um, feel free to keep adding to the chat if you have another question, but I will, um, I'll actually add it right now. So I'm gonna add the link to our website, acds.co. 
Um, and you are welcome to learn more about what ACDS does. You can find our YouTube channel and our podcast there and experience all of our Day in the Life uh, series. So um, definitely find our future events and join us. We're excited to have you here. And thank you again, Jeremy. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you on today. So I'm going to put Jeremy in the spot for one <laughs> last question from me. Okay, go for um, it. So Jeremy, going, and this is always a kind of pivot point for everyone. I think I'll apply to all of us here. Um, what is the one thing you wish you had or knew about before you came in to the actual career field while you're still going through the training that you would have liked to gone back and done over, or at least had that insight to the rest of the team here that might help them out? Uh, really? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, honestly, I spend every day just trying to, trying to figure out what it is I'm needing to do. There's always something to learn. And so basically, if I could have developed a few of uh, the more broad usable skills a little earlier on, some of the things that I've had to kind of muddle through and figure out, um, it, it, that would have helped out quite a bit. But, but really, it's, it's adapting every day to, to what the new challenge is. So uh, I'm constantly learning. So, so really just broadening myself a little bit farther than what I had before, what the, what my graduate program was doing, what uh, the uh, apprenticeship that I went through is uh, taught me just making myself a little, little bit better at what I do. Awesome. Thank you. Fantastic question, Eric. Thank you for that. All right, I'm just checking our chat one last time. It looks like you've gotten a lot of thank yous, Jeremy, and kudos and wonderful jobs. So um, again, thank you so much for being here. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. If you have an occupation that you want us to dig into a little bit for you um, that we don't have or that we've done not done recently, please feel free to email it to us, um, admin at acds.co or send us a note on one of our social channels and we'll get back to you, so. All right. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Nice work. Appreciate it. Thank you.